So one of the easiest ways uh, to discover, right, some of these root problems and those business challenges and their organizational goals is to use the primed model. Now, the primed model, um, I actually pulled from Instructional Story Design by Rance Green. I think that's the name of his book. And um, it, this is a really nice um, acronym. And so you ask things like personal opinions. So what do you feel, right? You're on the call with your subject matter expert or with your stakeholders, and you would ask questions that have to do with personal opinions. So what do you feel the root problem is? What would you like to see change as a result? Those are some personal opinion questions. Real stories. Can you share a real story that illustrates the problem? Can you provide a case study, right? That illustrates, you know, a real story about this problem. And then as they're answering these questions, you will be listening for the root problems, behaviors, or systems that can be changed or fixed. You wanna listen for the stories that can also be used in your course. Initial indicators, some of the questions that you could ask could be, what brought this problem to your attention? Describe how you became aware that training is needed. Another question you could ask has to do with metrics. What are the reports indicating in regard to this problem? Uh, can you provide an example of the kinds of issues you've noted in regard uh, to this problem? And some more examples that you could ask, you could say something like, is there, um, you know, give me an example of this type of problem. And then for D, distractions, right? Asking a series that follows all these different types of questions that you ask, you can see that you're defining the problem space by asking some of these questions. Now, maybe your stakeholders and maybe your subject matter experts um, can't answer all these questions and define the full problem space for you. You might have to go outside to ask some of these questions to other people, and that's fine. But th asking these types of questions will help you define your problem space and get to your root problem. The other one is, is distractions, right? Um, are, you know, is there anything distracting employees from performing their jobs well? If training was not available, what would you change about the way you are currently doing things? Right? And you can ask these questions in any order to help you determine if this is a problem training can solve. And of course, it'll also help you determine the business outcome, your root problem, and it'll give you some hints for your ideal solution, whether it's knowledge, skills, or attitude. How are real stories different from examples? Um, I think real stories, they're not that different from examples, right? It's just another way of asking, right? You're asking for um, case studies or you're asking like, can you give me any, any examples, right? So a real story might be like, oh, I can give you an example. Um, you know, Joe didn't turn in his TPS report. A real story might be, oh, um, all the entire accounting department, what we, you know, we did a full training on TPS reports and then we rolled this out on this date. You see what I'm saying? Like a full story would be like telling the whole story. An example would just be an example of like how they just didn't do it right or um, an example of the problem. But you're right. I mean, they're basically the same kind of thing. Um, it's, you're just trying to ask of uh, these targeted questions to get the whole problem in front of you. All right, so our metrics, the success moments, goals. Metrics just means that anything that's measurable, that's, that's really what we mean by metrics. And so, of course, metrics can mean many different things depending on the context of how we're using that term metrics. Uh, but in this um, scenario, we're just saying like, can I look at any survey results? Uh, do you have any uh, reports indicating this problem? Do you have any numbers? Do you have any quantifiable data? That's what we're looking for. All right, so let's give you a little example. 
So in this example, we'll see at widget company, you find that the computer system is very slow and the call center employees have to wait two minutes for the computer system to load data. Would training help these employees complete the calls more quickly? Right? And of course, you guys are probably gonna be like, no, right? Because the cause of the two minute performance gap is a slow computer system, right? It's not employee performance. And so in this case, designing and delivering training on how to process calls does not solve the problem. On the other hand, a faster computer would resolve probably that two minute gap. So to find out is training the solution, what is the desired business outcome, right? So this should be quantifiable. It should include a word like reduce, decrease, increase, right? Should have one of those quantifiable words. What is the root problem, right? What obstacle is preventing the desired business outcome? And then is training the ideal solution? So knowledge, skills, add two gaps, right? And so when you know the business outcome and the root problem, the ideal solution will become more evident to you. And I'm gonna show you how this works in just a moment. And so either the solution is within the scope of training to make a difference through increasing knowledge, skills, or impacting attitudes, or the solution is outside the scope of training and would be best affected by changing something in the work environment. And those are also solutions that you can, you know, propose to your company. It's just not necessarily a solution that you would build. All right, let's walk through a full example, right? All right, so your stakeholder says, we need customer service training, right? Now you are going to ask some primed questions, right? Because you want to get to, um, you know, the root problem, the business challenge, and what kind of, um, you know, uh, training might this require. Can you give me an example of what's happening that brought this to your attention? Well, our customer satisfaction scores are way down. What's one of the stories you've heard that illustrates why customers may be unhappy? So you see, ask for an example, ask for a story. Well, mostly that staff is just unfriendly and inattentive. Do you feel that the staff is unfriendly and inattentive? No, we hire good people. I think they just need better training. Hmm, that may be a good solution. Uh, is there anything else to consider? Are they distracted by anything that could prevent them from giving good customer service? Well, with all the new regulations, my staff has more paperwork than we can handle. All right, so I want you to think right now, what is the business outcome? What is the root problem? And is training the ideal solution? What's the business outcome? <laughs> oh yes, I'm waiting for you to type it in. All right, better customer service scores? Yes, yes increase customer service scores, right? We gotta have one of those quantifiable words. So yes, yes. Right. All right, what is the root problem? What do we know is the root problem? Paperwork, that's right. There's too much paperwork. So if the root problem is that there's too much paperwork, is training the ideal solution? Nope, 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 nope. Good, 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 good job, job, job. So you guys will see that you guys all got this right, right? Desired business outcome, increase customer satisfaction scores. What's the root problem? Paperwork is overwhelming staff. Is training the ideal solution? No. It's not the ideal solution. Instead, they need to increase the efficiency of paperwork so the staff can focus on customer service. So what you'll see here is if you can start asking really good questions that are in this primed model, you, you will train your ears, right, to be attuned to identifying the business outcome, 
the root problem and is training the ideal solution. And you'll be able to come into these things and these things will start clicking for you, right? And so you can see that um, in the examples, you ask several of the different primed questions to get really to the heart of that root problem. All right, let's get to another one. So Katie says, but can't we create job aids? Yeah, we could create a job aid, Katie, but that is that is a that is another training solution. How does a job aid increase paperwork efficiency? Right? It doesn't. They probably have too much paperwork. They probably have uh, they have to probably fill out duplicates of paperwork. Um, things probably aren't streamlined. A job aid is not going to help. Right, so you can see even a job aid falls under some kind of training solution. If training is not the answer, even a job aid is not going to be your solution. Right, you really want to find solutions for the root problems. You don't want to make up a solution that fits into our category if it doesn't apply. Right, because we're we're real problem solvers. All right, all right. Let's, let's go through another one. All right, your stakeholder with the really cool hair says, I need a better new hire onboarding program. And you're like, what's wrong with your current onboarding program? Uh, it doesn't seem to resonate with the employees. You lose a lot of them after three months. What insights have you received from employees during their exit interviews? And that's asking for metrics, right? Not much. Some of them complain about too much work. Well, can we look at the exit interview reports? Sure. Well, it looks like the reason why many of these employees are leaving has more to do with management. What's your turnover rate? 31%. What kind of training do your, do your managers receive? Well, they learn on the job. All right, cool. What's the desired business outcome? Reduce the rate of turnover. That's right. And there you go. And Teresa got it too. She put one of those measurable words in there. Decrease turnover. Yes. Employee retention. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Root problem. Training for management. Yes. And then yes. Is training an ideal solution? Yes, it is. Right? Training is good for management. Decrease turnover. Management struggles to build effective teams develop the manager's team building skills. All right, you guys are already looking like pros. Let's do one, let's do one more. All right, stakeholder says, we need an online course about the personality inventory test. I only have 15 minutes to talk. All right, can you give an example of what's happening that brought this to your attention? Well, you see the scale tells you your personality type when you know your type and the type of another person, you understand how they're different. This will also help our managers uh, show more empathy. Uh, what's one of the stories you've heard that illustrates why managers need help with empathy? There are complaints. One I hear is that rules aren't applied fairly, especially the alien leave rules. One will get to leave and another won't, and it's not clear why. Do you think it's true the rules aren't being applied fairly? Well, a few managers have been disciplined by HR. We have a lot of alien leave cases being handled by managers who might not be empathetic. As a result, people complain that it's unfair. Do people complain about other things as well? Well, some people complain about not being able to work from home. People who are denied complain about favoritism. What could your department accomplish if people were less distracted by complaints? <gasps> no one has ever asked me that. Now, if we weren't bickering, we could put together some incredible ideas for new products. Great. I'll set up our next call. All right. What's the desired business outcome? Reduce bickering to increase innovation. Yes. Right? Reduce complaints. 
right? Give more time for increased productive work, right? And then what's the root problem? Yeah. Maybe, <laughs> maybe it's communication, maybe it's uh, people can't work together. Okay. And is training the ideal solution? Yes. Maybe. All right. So this is what I came up with. Decreased employee complaints. Management struggles with employee, uh, with empathy and communication, right? Which you guys both, uh, which um, I know that you guys uh, captured both. And then is training the ideal solution? Yes. Looks like we need to develop our manager skills again, right? Right, and Portia says could be, right? Maybe there's more questions that need to be asked, right? And these are just examples about how to ask, how asking good questions can help lead to, you know, finding out this, the desired business outcome, the real one, and finding out what that real root problem is. And so some of the other things that you will want to look for, right, during while you're asking these questions, whether they're on a call, whether they're in person, whether they're in their meetings, however you're asking questions, however you're getting answers uh, to find out what these root problems are, there are some signs that will indicate to you that they are either knowledge, skill, or attitude problems. And so the signs of a knowledge problem would be that the learners don't have the information that they need to perform, right? And so this means that the design will probably be problem solving activities and job aids. And so you want to look for case studies during your uh, analysis and design phases, right, that you can include in your course to design for problem solving activities. Right? If it's a school, a skill problem, the sign is, can someone be proficient without practice? If not, it's a skill. Right. And so, of course, you're going to design what practice. So you're going to simulate the actual work environment and hands on practice, which usually lends itself to some types of scenarios or simulations. All right. And so you would want to create some kind of problem centered design. And so stories are the core of scenarios and games. Um, and of course, we talked about all about scenario and problem centered or task based uh, instruction and that type of design in week two of group coaching and of course all throughout the academy right and then for attitude problems the signs are the way that your employees feel affects their performance right and so to design to close this type of gap includes the purpose of the training, the importance and the benefits to the learners, right? And their coworkers and their customers, right? How is it that this behavior that they do, how does it affect them, the company and those that are around them, right? And so again, um, the way to solve attitude problems is another problem-centered design. Show negative consequences that demonstrate the opposite of the benefits, right? So for instance, if we know that, um, people aren't handling food safely, right? Because it's an attitude problem, right? They just are um, apathetic about their jobs, then that's an attitude problem. And so they should probably be shown what happens when they don't care about food safety. Children die, you know, of course, I'm going to the extreme. But that is something that is very plausible when people aren't taking into account you know, food safety or water safety or whatever, it can kill people. And so you'd want to capture their attention and their emotions to help change their attitudes. So that is how you design for attitude problems. Now, a lot of times your courses might be there to try and solve all three problems in one course. And so you can combine these different things into one course, right? But you're going to be looking for Am I going to need to design this for attitude, knowledge, or skills? All three, two of them, one of them, whatever it is.
All right. So if our way of solving problems follows this, right? You identify the problem, you identify the root cause, you brainstorm some solutions, you find out what are the obstacles, what are the distractions, what are the constraints on how we can solve this problem, and what are the actions. So for example, a problem might be high turnover rates, right? The root cause might be management withholds information and they fear difficult conversations. So some of the solutions that you brainstorm might be, all right, we might wanna do a blended learning approach. We're gonna do scenarios because they're gonna need to practice um, having these difficult conversations. Um, they might need some job aids uh, and also a mentorship program, right? To, you know, keep people, um, you know, coached in the way of having difficult conversations and being a better manager, yada, 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 right? And then some obstacles that you might encounter as you're trying to solve this problem might, for example, be something like they don't have a learning management system and the managers aren't going to be good at being mentors, right? Managers not been mentors before, how are we going to make them mentors? And so what are some of the actions? Well, how about the management training will be on SharePoint, right? The company SharePoint. Um, and then there might be some checklists generated uh, for these future mentors or a mentor training, right? And you think about what are these actions to help, you know, overcome the obstacles based on some of these solutions that I've brainstormed based on the problem and the root cause. Right, and just like you guys know, um, when you are designing your solutions, you're always thinking about your end goals and identifying um, your performance objectives and working backwards from there um, to find out the best way to design your solutions.